Hey, welcome back. I'm Christy and this is Richard. And that's completely out of our usual introduction, but welcome back anyway <laughs> to our, our YouTube, YouTube channel, channel Fulfill, Fulfill the, the Game, Game of Life. Life. Now again, if you watch the first video, blah, blah, blah. again, if you watch the, blah, blah, it's easy for me to say. If you watch the first video of this series, we're in Magoito Beach. Yes. And uh, we are aware that the sun is at our back and you probably can't see our face. And yes, we just changed the angle a we little did. bit. We did. We just want you guys to enjoy the, uh, the beach and the waves that we have gotten to enjoy since we've been here. They really are majestic. Again, they may not look as big as they are when you're sitting here on camera, but uh, if you get tired of looking at us, you could just watch the back because it's fascinating to watch. Absolutely fascinating. We love it. We absolutely love it. I know it is so hard to picture these things on film like they are when you're here, but this will literally take your breath away. This, this amount of water hitting these rocks right by you, it almost feels just life-threatening as you're standing here. And the, the depth of the roar, it's just majestic. I don't know what else to say. This is, uh, this is quite the experience. We've been standing here for 10 minutes now, um, and it's just, it's just fascinating. Uh, so, here we are on video two. If we make video two, well, we must have made video two if you're listening to this, this way. Um, so, we had two things we wanted to share. One is our trip to Salzburg, Austria. Yes. Fantastic trip, and we're gonna show you so much stuff, uh, and we'll tell you to start with, of all the things we've seen here in Europe in about four months, we think Salzburg probably rises to number two on our list. It is just again it's beyond words and it's so amazing to see all the sites and the lakes and the history and uh it was just an amazing trip i love austria it was awesome it was really yeah. really beautiful we can't wait to show you some details and the second part of that is in order to condense some of our videos the drive back from Italy to Portugal. Now make no mistake, we are so excited to be back to Portugal, yes. to get back to the good food, uh, better food, I guess for us, but definitely better prices. The and people. The people, the kindness, yes. those things. Uh, we really are so glad to be back to Portugal. Let's get started. Salzburg, Austria has a tie to a United States movie that Christy just absolutely loved. I knew nothing about the movie until he had me watch it. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if that's exactly accurate, but Christy absolutely loved this movie and I tried to talk her out of going to this yeah. because I just didn't really want to. No, he didn't want to go. It was terrible. It was awful. I didn't know what I was going to do. I had to twist his arm every step of the way. Well, as we've given you the hint a couple of times, the hills were alive. With the sound of music. Now, neither of us sing very well. We sing all the time, but we don't sing very well. So we'll save you the ear piercing sounds that would come with us singing that. Uh, but Christy just demanded that we go on this sound of music tour while we were there. This is the filming location for the sound of music. And uh, this city did not let us down. Not one bit. It so. was awesome. It was <laughs> absolutely awesome. Um, so let's start with a little bit more general on Salzburg and then we'll go into the sound of music and how that tour went and how we experienced that. Uh, but maybe the first start is where did we stay? We actually had the opportunity to stay at the uh, Von Trapp, um, their original residence in Salzburg, the Von Trapp, Von Trapp family. Yep, so we obviously were learning along this trip but it's pretty interesting. Uh, the film itself obviously was not filmed in the actual residence of the Von Trapp, 
but it is based on mostly a true story yes. uh, and a uh, military uh, leader in the, he the Navy, was the submarine naval leader. naval commander yep. and, uh, he, for the Austrian Navy. Yep. yep. And uh, he did live. He, he, uh, he did have the multiple children. So, yes. The wife passed away. Yes. And then uh, Maria in the story, um, she was actually a teacher at the Abbey and not an actual nun as they portray her in the movie. Yep. But uh, at the Trap Hotel, we actually stayed in her original room before she became the wife. Yeah, so how cool is that? We, we actually were so excited. We didn't get great footage of the sign uh, walking to it, but the room we stayed in was the actual room uh, in the real story that wasn't involved in the movie. And uh, it was just really, really cool. Wasn't it was it? a cool part of history to be able to walk the halls of the home and know that that family lived there and uh, just learning some of the subsequent history of the other people that um, lived there after they had to flee Austria. Yeah, the one thing you're going to learn if you don't know already, you can't tell the stories that we learned of Austria without understanding the link to World War II and the Nazis. Um, this, the villa, the original Von Trapp uh, villa was actually taken over by the Nazis and was lived in by the Nazis. Uh, all of the original furniture minus two pieces were, were sold. sold off yeah. by the Nazis. Um, and some of the planning, I don't what the high German officer, but some, sadly enough, some of the real uh, devious planning that occurred. Uh, that was one of the headquarters. It was one of the headquarters. Uh, and it was a really, really sad story, but the actual manor had been uh, taken and uh, of course the Von Trapp family did indeed flee to the United States. Mm -hmm. So it's a really sad, uh, sombering and multiple things about the Nazis uh, in the trip. Uh, but anyway, the, the stay at the villa was fascinating. It was. It, not for me though, just for her. I, I really, I don't, I don't know about this movie at all. But anyway, yeah. one, of, one of the things that was really interesting about the movie is the uh, tour guide told us is because the movie is in English, uh, surprisingly, uh, the German-speaking people, even most of Austria, is hardly aware of the movie. And they the just, it was funny because they just know that the sound of music tour buses go through their city and they're like, what, what is, is that? that? Yeah, what is that? <laughs> so so he, he was explaining, mothers have to explain it to children, but they, they don't really have the history. And the movie obviously is on it at a minimum once a year in the United States around the Christmas time. Um, so it's kind of fascinating. Before we head a little bit further down, uh, we did experience a couple of other things in uh, Austria that uh, just in Salzburg. Right. Some of the history, um, just a couple of things that the, uh, who was it, the owner? who created Red Bull is from Austria. Yep, and if you're not aware, many more people may be aware, this is the uh, birthplace of Mozart. Yes. Uh, so of course, there you can see the, uh, the influences, you can see the museum. We didn't visit the museum, uh, but uh, a very proud lineage there and, uh, and definitely a, a genius and well-deserved uh, lineage there. So it was really, really cool. A little bit more history though of the city. We found it fascinating. Yes. Uh, one of our tour stops was the salt mines. Yes. As we uh, started to tour the salt mines, we kind of started to hear the story and this is pretty fascinating. Uh, one of the major historical uh, sources of wealth uh, in Europe was salt. It was so important in the wealth structure that uh, Salzburg was actually a country owned by the Vatican. It was not a separate country. It was owned by the Vatican. And all of the proceeds, or almost all the proceeds from mining salt was actually uh, sent back through the Vatican to the Catholic Church. Um, it was such a prevalent, uh, such an important part of the economy uh, that, and I kind of put it together right before they told me, the city of Salzburg, uh, the word Salz is salt. And uh, the Salt River, the salt mines, and there's just a tying in of all of the importance of salt in the historical economy and uh, even the way it played uh, geopolitically, maybe as a, as a way to say it was fascinating to, to understand how, uh, how significant uh, salt was. So, but the tour to the salt mine, 
that was absolutely uh, amazing. We had to get dressed in a suit, and I think we will show you a picture of yep. when we were in the suit. But that was really interesting to see the machines that they use to mine the salt. Uh, we got to take a raft ride deep along in it. deep, really deep um, in the salt mine that uh, they actually actively were mining that salt. So they have, uh, they uh, fill the cave or the cavern with water. And I think the the salt settles. The, the, the salt dissolves into the water. Right. And then they pump the water out. Yep. And, yep. Uh, and basically extract, right, evaporate the water back out and you're left with salt crystals. Still done today, yes. uh, which it was really, really cool, wasn't it? It was cool. There were some slides on the inside, so to keep going down, yes. uh, we hopped on the wood slides and, and went down maybe two or three levels, mm -hmm. uh, which was really awesome. Um, you know, they really didn't allow photography. We got a couple of little uh, snippets, but uh, the GoPro is absolutely terrible at dark footage. Uh, but a, a little bit of it, it we'll show you here, but it doesn't, doesn't take good footage in the dark at all. Um, so anyway, the salt mines were cool, but knowing the grander history of the salt... That um, was really fascinating. Yeah, the, the tour guide basically made clear there was so much wealth yes. generated through the salt mines that so much went to the Vatican, the Vatican was completely hands off. Yeah, as uh, long as that money kept rolling in. Yep, and uh, basically this was a massive party town. Mm -hmm. uh, manors were built all around uh, to house the parties, basically. So as you can see here in the drone footage, we found one of the best places just right behind the fortress. fortress. Yeah. Owen Salzburg. We apologize for the lack of <laughs> we don't know how articulating to say. the language well. Uh, pardon us. Uh, but the fortress overlooking the city was grand. And as you can see here on the side as well was the monastery in which uh, some of the Sound of Music was filmed as well. So at the beginning of Sound of Music, you will see this fortress in the background as well as the abbey. Yeah, so I tell you what. Let's just hop into the sound of music. Let's okay. hop into uh, the, the tour and the things we saw because it was the primary reason she forced me to go. I don't quite remember it that way. Yeah, what do you do? Um, so, the sound of music was filmed in Salzburg. And uh, a few things that were super interesting. We hopped on the bus. Uh, they took us to, and this is pretty interesting. Uh, the houses that were used in The Sound of Music was two separate houses they combined to make look like one while they did the, uh, the footage. Yes, so in the beginning of The Sound of Music, she is singing, I Have Confidence, right? Yep. And this yellow house is where um, she's singing along, walking down that road. The dirt road. The dirt road, and she rings the, uh, the doorbell at the house. So that's one of the houses that's supposed to be the front of the house. Yep, so any time in the movie you saw the front of the house, you saw this house. And then the second house, it was a mansion, um, that was built by the bishop for his nephew. Um, the back of the house is where you see them in the movie, where they actually fall into the, um, the lake yep. when they're in the when boat. When they fall out of the boat. Yeah, so they filmed that portion in the back of the house of that separate mansion. Anytime that there was a scene in on the back patio or in the water, as Christy mentioned, when they fall in, that was on the separate house the, in, the, in the back here. So it is pretty interesting they pointed out to us that, you know, they had to cut that in some cases they were talking outside uh, but they would use one house and then they'd be filming in a different location. They'd use another house, but they'd have to put them together. But it was pretty cool. Being there was actually really, really cool. Uh, they did tell us the story of the youngest girl when she fell out of the boat. If she you, did not know how to swim. Yep. Right? If you paid attention yeah. real close, she you, didn't instantly come back out of no. the water. There, thankfully, there was another um, stunt person in the water shaking, shaking the boat that actually pulled her up from the water and then they continue the scene. Yep, and apparently they uh, they filmed that scene twice and Julie Andrews uh, was supposed to pump fall out of the front of the boat, she fell out of the back, back. of the boat. Because so, she was supposed to have held on to that little girl knowing that she couldn't swim, but she didn't go forward, she went back, the little girl fell in and 
Yeah, super, super interesting yeah, little interesting. tidbits, right? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the drone footage, a little bit makes you nervous to, to take the drone out. There's a lot of people around. Um, and we were very careful to make sure we weren't around people. Uh, but to get the drone footage here was pretty darn cool, wasn't it? Isn't yes, that fascinating? it was. Uh, it wasn't for me. It was for her. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Now, the tour had us hop on the bus and we were off across the countryside to the Basilica of St. Michael, which is where the wedding, uh, at the end of the movie, yes. where the wedding occurred. So you can see the footage here. It's absolutely beautiful. beautiful. So as we arrived back in Salzburg after a long day of Christy just singing her heart out, singing her heart out, I knew none of the words. All I could hear was Richard singing along with everybody else. story. I don't know if I remember it that way. <laughs> but as we arrived back to the parking location, we were right across the street from the Mirabel Palace and Gardens. Yeah, and so much of the singing parts, the do re mi, yeah. the coming up the steps, the uh, the as they walk around the uh, the fountain. This is the fountain they were walking around. Y'all don't pay my bills. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other sites that we saw, if you remember the song, I am 16 going, going on. on I don't know that song. She knows it. But anyway. <laughs> if you remember that song in the little gazebo, um, we were shown the gazebo, a little bit of story about whether it was on set or not on set, and this one's a little bit smaller than the original one and all those things. But anyway, it was part of the tour, and if you like the movie, you'll remember they're running around dancing. It is a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cool song, pretty cool scene. He loved it. Now, I did ask because I was curious. I'm sure everybody and their brother wants to go to the actual hill where Julie Andrews sang The Sound of Music, except me. I really didn't want to go. Uh -uh. She wanted to go. But anyway, um, what we were told, and I thought I had read before, the land is owned by a private farmer who has no desire for anyone to visit. It is in Germany. He um, will actually bring out his shotgun. At least that's what the tour guide said. So. <laughs> We didn't get the chance to actually sing on the mountain. No. Uh, but it was uh, just a little piece of information if you're curious about the movie. All right, so the one thing you can't wrap up with without uh, showing appreciation to was our tour guide. Now, I don't remember his name. Do you remember his name? I don't, no. But let me tell you what. This man lives his dream every, every day. Every single day he is on that tour bus. He was smiling and singing. We'll show you some of the footage here uh, with the little puppet. Yeah. Uh, he just loved his job, and if everybody loved their job that much, life would be great, right? Richard wanted his job. Good weather. So that's the view you remember all the time when the family was on the terrace of the house. Yeah. Because the terrace is here on the left-hand side, and you never see this build. Now we're gonna see the building in the terrace from the other side but the camera was swimming from the building to the lake and this beautiful view of this mountain. That's what all the, when the on back swing the ping the monaco on the terrace, yeah. then you see this view in the background. Or after 
the children falling on this boat with this lake, yeah, yeah, with the yeah. boats. They are the captain talking with Julie Andrews and then the view always in the background of this mondo. You can see the real Maria von Trapp next time you watch the movie The Sound of Music. As in the exact moment, in the point, three seconds before Maria, Julie Andrews and Maria took the bus in the Sona Half Confidence, there is a big square in the old town where he touched the water of the uh, square of the fountain. Then three seconds before, Julie Andrews crossed the arc, the entrance for the cathedral to the square. And behind Julie Andrews, there are three ladies walking from left to right. And the one with the green dindle watched to the camera is the real Maria von Trump. We want to extend our appreciation to uh, the tours, the uh, the official Sound of Music tour in uh, Salzburg, Austria. The uh, tour was fantastic. The guy's excitement and his commitment and love of the film and the history uh, made the, uh, the the tour well worth the money. And uh, you didn't have to worry about parking or anything else. It was nice. It was. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. There was, a, there was one more piece of Salzburg that was both sombering and majestic all at the same time. Uh, just outside of Salzburg is uh, the Eagle's Nest. Oh, yes. And the Eagle's Nest was built for Hitler by his commanders in World War II. The trip up to the Eagle's Nest and it, the height. It was, uh, it was a little bit scary, but it was... Um, it was sombering. It was a, a, you know, it was a beautiful drive up. It was very high up in the mountains. It, um, it was hence, a majestic view. Yes. It was, it was almost uh, scary, almost in every, everything that you do. When you get up there, it's scary. It's really, really high. But to your point, it's sombering. To, just to understand who that was built for. So some of the excitement to even visit that, you know, it was gone. Um, you just get there and you remember the people impacted um, by the hideous things that happened during that time. So it was a kind of a, you went with reverence. Yes. Uh, separating yourself from the history uh, of the place, the, uh, the location, the height uh, was significant. You can see in the footage, which unfortunately I left the GoPro mistakenly in the car, so we got cell phone footage everywhere. Uh, but you see these uh, cliffs that people were walking on that we just weren't comfortable. You can see how fast these clouds move right here in this video alone. Uh, that's not sped up. There's that much uh, um, yep. just turbulence coming over. It's just a magnificent thing to see. It's high. It's unbelievably up there. Are you scared? Oh, I'm scared. I can't stand that. <laughs> and I'm not ashamed to admit it. It just is what it is. Uh, you walk through a long tunnel that was part of the original right. build. And then you sit there and wait for a moment and then you enter a elevator. A very grand looking elevator. Yeah, it's all brass, yeah. shiny, shiny glass. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I, I'm sure it held uh, quite the allure in its day. Yeah. Uh, and you work your way up the elevator, you get up there, and uh, it's just a phenomenal view. So, you, you, you do have to say, if you, if you can mentally separate it uh, from its origins and just enjoy while you're there, it was a beautiful thing to observe. Yeah. Really, really awesome. We actually stayed one extra night to see that. Um, and we actually want to show you this footage 
we time captured this out of the window in our hotel and as you see the clouds roll away here to expose the grand mountains in front of us it's this footage was just phenomenal to catch and uh, to, to see the uh, clouds go away from the high altitude. So hope you enjoy that view as well. So that wraps up Austria for us. It does. It and was an amazing trip. We it, enjoyed it on the way back, but we were definitely happy to arrive back in Portugal. We hope that you guys enjoyed our part two video and um, all the fantastic videos and pictures that we've shown you on our journey. And uh, thank you so much for sticking with us this long. And if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. And on our next video, we're going to work on having the sun at our face if we can. But uh, we hope you enjoyed what's behind us. And we hope that you can hear us over the crashing waves. We'll work on the audio if you can't. So until next time, ciao. Ciao. Are you watching that movie again? Yes. Are you crying? I'm just so excited that we have enough onion left for dinner. <laughs> really? <laughs> You're a mess. And cut. <laughs>